okay fine yeah. good afternoon everyone so my name is ram so i'll be one of the course instructor for this ml of course okay and in this session we will be doing this all with us uh, okay as well as i have heard that uh, we are not able to solve the solve the entire entire and 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 the practice assignment questions okay so we will solve the practice assignment questions as well as uh, solve those problems too okay is that fine yes sir and, uh, yes sir okay, okay and sir. since since today is the deadline i guess most of you have looked at the content okay so let me share my screen are you able to see my screen Yeah, I guess. You yes, sir. It. Okay. So first, we we'll look at the practice assignment. Okay. So this the first question, sine x by x is continuous or not? Actually, the answer was mentioned as false. Okay, but it was true actually. Okay. Sine x by x is actually continuous at x equal zero. Okay. The reason for that is, if you look at this like. Uh, Hello, sir. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt, sir. No, I have a query. See, actually, in a graded assignment, also they have asked uh, whether a function is continuous or not. But they haven't give, mentioned about the point, like x is equal to one, x is equal to two, or x is equal to zero. So, okay. without mentioning a specific point, also can we define whether a function is uh, continuous or not? So basically, then they are trying to say that uh, it is continuous across across the entire domain. Yeah, the first question. So yeah, it's yeah. like so okay. basically what they're trying to say is, if the function okay. is continuous across like every other point, right, from minus infinity to infinity, then then that is called as a continuous function. Okay, so if at any point there is, uh, I mean, there is no, uh, I mean, Dis uh, if, if there is a break, then it yeah, is not continuous, continuous, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, so now come for this. Are you able to see this whiteboard? Are you able to see the whiteboard? No, sir. Which no, whiteboard, sir? sir? Which whiteboard? Okay. Uh, you should be able to see that in the chat box, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, see, sir, uh, we are not. I shared it in the chat box. You could see. I shared a jam file with the meeting, right? Uh, access is denied, sir. Access is denied. Okay. One second. Okay, so anyone now now we now we should be able to access it. Okay, so for this, okay. uh, so let me just share my entire screen. That will be better. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now you could see here. We have here. The function is f of x equals to sine x divided by x, right? So we should be looking for the continuity, continuity in, in the in the left side as well as the right side. That is x minus as well as x plus, right? So if you look for the x x minus, so limit x tends to zero minus, right? This what about this sine x by x? Since since this this is equal to zero and this is equal to zero at x equal to zero, we'll be using this uh, differentiable table. That is, uh, you can you can do the differentiation for the for the x. I mean for the x and the y for the numerator and denominator you could do. So if you, if you differentiate uh, sine x, it's going to be equals to cos x. Okay, cos x, and then if you differentiate x, it's going to be equals to one. Okay, so at x equal to zero minus that is like. When you when you are approaching to zero from the left hand side, so the cos x value, which is nothing but cos zero, it's going to be equals to one, right? So from zero minus, it is going to be equals to one. Okay, cos x value at x equal zero, it's going to be equals to one. Similarly, from zero plus also, we'll be getting the same value, cos x by one, which is going to be one. Okay. So limit x tends to zero plus. Okay. Given the same thing, we'll be doing differentiation. Cos x by one you will be getting, which is going to be equals to one. Okay. So 
actually the first the first option is it is actually true okay even if you want to look at it from the graph also i have drawn the graph here okay i just zoom it a bit okay so this is the graph of y equals to sin x by x and you could see that at x equals 0 okay at x equals 0 it is actually continuous all right so the first the first question answer is actually true okay we will make the change it was mentioned as false we will make the change okay. sir uh, in desmos uh, if you zoom in at the point 0 it says undefined yeah but still but still it's going to be considered as uh, continuous because from the from the left hand side and the, on the right hand side right it's going to be approaching to the same value one so it is actually continuous but sir, to be to be you know equal to continuous the value of the function should also be equal to the value of the limit na no? yeah yeah but then since since is like sin x by x right okay since since is so like that will become zero that will become zero it's like undefined one that's why we we'll just look at the zero minus of the zero plus one I think this is removable discontinuity. What? A removable discontinuity means the left hand and the right hand limit exist, but at the val at the uh, x value, the function is not defined. Okay. Yes. Yes. Correct. So go on. So what does that mean? So yeah, so that's what I'm saying. This is a remove case of removable discontinuity, where your left hand limit exists, right hand limit exists, and they both converge to same value, but the function's value at the point does not match. Correct, correct. Yeah, so that's what I, I wanted. So, no, so, so does it mean it is continuous at that point? Or no, it is no, no. It's not continuous. Point? It's not continuous. It's a category of discontinuity called removable discontinuity. Okay, that means by then if it is discontinuous, then it means answer will be false, sir. False, sir. yes, false. Okay, so actually, I think in maths one, this was covered. Okay, uh, I just look into it. So, as far as I'm aware of it, it should be continuous, but yeah, I look into it. Okay, for now, you could just consider it as false okay, as it was mentioned, but I look into it and then I'll give the clarification. Okay, uh, sir, yeah. Sir, I think this, uh, as you rightly said, that we have done this kind of question in Max 1. So, the, when, we, when we solve it like, you know, the value of x tends to 0, what is the limit of sin x by x? Then it comes to 1, sir. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then it comes to 1, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, does it make difference when we say x tends to 0, find the value of sin x by x, and when we say x equal to 0, find the value of sin x by x? Does it make a difference or it means the same thing, sir? No, no, it, it's a different, it, it, there's a difference actually. Limit extends to 0 sin x by x, it's not the same as f of, uh, I mean, sin 0 by 0. It's not the same. Okay? But yeah, as, as a student has mentioned. Can you, can, 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 can you clarify these two options, sir? Can you write down on a, a whiteboard and clarify these two options, sir? Because it is a bit confusing. Okay. We are discussing this problem for last two sessions. <laughs> okay. So, what you're trying to say is, you are trying to ask whether if you are trying to ask whether f of 0 and then the limit extends to 0 whether they are both the same or not, right? Actually, it is not the same. No, I am saying one question is that x tends to 0, find the limit of sin x by x and the no. second question is x equal to 0, find the limit of sin x by x. Both the same. Both are same. Then See, the answer should be one. The limits, right? If you are finding the limits, limits in the both the cases, it's the same. Like the, the limit which you defined is, is nothing but as, as x tends to 0, right? X, x tends to a particular value, you will find the limit, limit at that particular function, right? So if I ask you to find the limit at x equals 0, or, or if I ask you, if I, if I symbolically write this as limit x tends to 0 sin x by x, it's the same. Okay, there's no difference in it. So, in that case, answer should be one. Actually, in this particular problem, the answer should be false. So, as soon as mentioned that, since we do not have the value at f of zero, f of zero is not defined. Okay. No, so, sir, so point, the point is that, but then point, I will look into this particular case. Okay. 
sir point is that we are getting arguments for both the cases we are getting arguments for true also we are getting arguments for false also yeah so yeah yeah, getting, yeah yeah i agree if, I agree. if but the thing is if i am getting answer if i am getting answer as one it means my function is continuous then in that case answer will be true see the thing is we have here three things okay limit extends to zero minus we should be finding limit extends to zero plus we should be finding and then f of zero we should be finding okay so according to students if, if, if the like if, if all these three are equal then only it is continuous even if these two are equal then then it was not like continuous so that is why i mentioned i will i will look at it okay how how exactly sir it hello yeah. sir, sorry sorry to interrupt uh, hmm. but this this function has limiting value but it yeah. is not continuous right we can say that okay. yeah 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 that's what That's what. That's what. That's like, why yeah. the answer is false. Correct. Correct. See, and until until now, until now, we have like agreed on that. But then more clarification on this, I will I will let you know. That's what I was trying to say. Okay. So what we know is like clear. Okay. So see, we. So as someone said, as uh, someone said that the, 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 as someone said, the function has limiting value, and the limiting value is one, right? Yeah. But yeah. the function is not continuous, right? That is yeah. the reason why answer is false. Yeah. 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 Right? yeah. Yeah. Until now, yes. Okay, and and those two cases which I quoted that x tends to zero and x equal to zero, whatever is given in question, they mean the same thing, right? Yes, yes. If I ask you at x equals zero, find the find the limit, or if I ask you limit x tends to zero, what is that value? It's the same. Okay, okay, thank you, sir. Okay. So now we'll come to the second one. Second one, I guess it's easy. Okay, it's it's just a basic set one. Do you have any doubts in this? i can discuss or or else we can move forward no not in this question sir okay we can move forward right can we move forward yes sir yes sir okay so this is this one is also a theoretical question we have this two dimensional vector x and y x transpose y is nothing but x dot y because x dot y we we just write that as x transpose y right And then this uh, sum of y equals to one to d x a y a it is also same thing, okay? So all these three one two three they are they are equivalent, okay? So option will be three. Now Sir, we'll I have a query with this question. Question three. Yeah. Uh, so in this, uh, what uh, vector do we consider? So like, do we consider x to be a row vector or a column vector? See, vector vectors we will, will always consider as like column vectors. Okay, vectors we we always consider it like column vectors. All right. All right. Thank you, sir. Could you explain this question, sir? Like uh, this one. Yes, yes. Number three. Yes. What is x transpose y? Sorry. First of all, what is x dot y? X dot y is nothing but x transpose y, right? By definition. Correct. So and what do you do in this x transpose y? Basically, let's say yeah, this is x okay. So on x two, x three, and so on, x d okay. And then one more space, and y equals to y one, y two, y three, and so on, y d okay. So when they are asking for x dot y, which is nothing but x transpose y, this is going to be equal to x one, x two, and so on, x d multiplied by this vector y one, y two, y three, and so on, y d right. So if you multiply this, what are you going to get? You are going to get x one y one plus x two y two plus X three y three plus and so on x d y d right. So now coming back to this, we have a x dot y is equal to x transpose y. First two options are like pretty straightforward, and then this is nothing but sum of y equals to one to d x a y a is nothing but what we have found found here right. This x one y one plus x two y two plus and so on x d y d. Okay. So basically, all these three they represent the same one. Okay, they are equal. All right. Okay, sir. You know, coming to this uh, 
linear approximation uh, linear approximation of tan x around x equal 0 okay if you look at this what we have over here is tan x right f of x equals to tan x and then linear, linear, linear approximation of like uh, with respect to 0 of f of x it's going to be equals to what f of 0 plus f dash of 0 into x minus 0 right and what is going to be this f dash of 0 can someone tell me what is f dash of x here f dash of x is second square x right correct yes sir tan x differentiation is second square x and second square 0 is going to be equals to 1 so which basically means and then tan 0 is going to be 0 okay f of 0 is tan 0 which is going to be 0 plus f dash of 0 is 1 into x minus 0 which is going to be equals to x okay so the linear approximation of tan x around x equals 0 is going to be equals to x right now moving forward the partial derivative of x cube plus y cube with respect to x at x equals to 1 and y equals to 2. So this problem, what do you mean by this uh, partial derivative one? Right? Partial derivative with respect to x is nothing but dou m by dou x, right? Okay. Here the f is given as x cube plus y cube. So partial derivative of uh, okay, let's say f of x comma y is equals to x cube plus y cube. Okay. Partial derivative with respect to x at the point what? 1 comma 2, I suppose. Yeah, 1 comma 2. So partial derivative with respect to x, it's going to be equal to 3x square. Okay. 3x square plus 0 because partial derivative of y cube with respect to x, it's going to be 0. So substituting the value of 1 comma 2, you get 3 into 1, which is going to be 3. Okay. So the partial derivative of x, x cube plus y square. With respect to x at x equals 1 y equals 0, it's going to be equal to 3. All right. So now moving forward. Consider the function f of x equals to 7x plus 2, comma 9. Right? Is, is f of x continuous? Right? That's what they are asking for. Now, the same conditions we will be using, like we discussed in the first question. For, for it to be continuous, f of x, f of x star, should be equals to limit x tends to x star minus f of x and limit x tends to x star plus f of x. Okay. So from our function is f of x continuous. The only point we should be looking at is this this x equals to one. Okay. Because seven x plus two will always be continuous and this nine will look, nine will be continuous. And only at x equals to 1, we should be checking. And if you look at it, at x equals to 1, exactly the value is equal to 9. Okay. And then, since since from x equals to 1, like for, for x less than or equals to 1, it is 9. Even for x minus also, okay, that is like 1 minus also, the, the limit value of f of x is going to be equal to 9. But what about 1 plus? Okay, 1 plus, as, as x is tending to 0, okay, from, from the from the right side this value is going to be equal to 7 plus 2 right which is going to be equal to 9 okay so this this x minus it's going to be equal to 9 and this x plus value it should, it's going to be equal to 7 into 1 plus 2 okay and this is also equal to 9 so on this f of x star is also equal to 9 so since these three are equal okay we have here f of x is continuous okay Sixth question is it clear? Uh, sir, uh, left side and right side is clear. How did you find the value of uh, uh, fx? fx, they said that at x is less than <laughs> equals to one, f of x equals to nine, right? So even when x, even when x equals to one, also it should be equal to nine, right? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, okay. Now they are asking for which of the following is the best approximation of e power zero point zero one nine? Use the linear approximation around zero. So the same formula for the linear approximation, f of x is going to be equals to f of uh, 
x star plus f dash of x star into x minus x star okay now here this x star is going to be equal to 0 and then this x is going to be equal to 0 0.019 okay and now since uh, you can consider this f of x as e power x okay which gives you f dash of x is also e power x okay now if you substitute this f of x star i mean which is going to be f of 0 okay since they asked for the linear approximation around 0 okay f of 0 is going to be e power 0 1 and then f dash of 0 is also going to be e power 0 1 okay now the linear approximation around 0 0.019 it's going to be equals to 1 plus f dash of x 1 into x is going to be 0 0.019 minus 0 which is going to give you 1.019 okay all right so is the sound question clear just give me a moment okay i'll be back for Hello, hello, sir. Hello, sir. We will come back in two minutes. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir. Sir, in question number six, uh, can we solve by using graph, by drawing the graph? Yeah, yeah, yeah. By graph also, you could solve. So, uh, yes, sir. It will be uh, easy if, if we draw the graph. Yeah, but then the problem with the drawing graph is it can only be showing you until. If you could see here at x equals to 1, right? Yes, sir. At x equals to 1, the value equals to 9, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So from now onwards, instead of instead of thinking about this. Sir, so this uh, this equation is hold for x greater than 1, no? Okay. But so you could see here, like for this graph, right? For this graph. And on the right hand side, it's going to be this red color, red color curve. And on the left hand side, it's going to be this horizontal line. Yes, okay. yes. Okay. So yes, you can see here, even even while while approaching from the right side, right, its the, its value is going to be equal to nine. Even on yes. the left side, it's going to be equal to nine. And and at x equals to one, also it's going to be equal to nine. Okay. Nine. So it is continuous. Yes. All right. Okay. So I have the sound problem is also clear, right? Okay. Now we'll come to this ninth, eighth one. We have this f of x comma y equals to x square plus y square. Okay. This is the multivariable function, so we'll be using the partial derivative. Okay. And they asked for what is the linear approximation of f of, of x comma y at, at x square plus y square. Okay. So now we know that for the for a linear approximation, right? F of uh, x comma y equals to x square plus y square, and the linear approximation at a point x with respect to, for a function f, right? Okay. Small x, it's going to be equal to this. This let's consider like x star. Okay. This is nothing but f of x star plus gradient of f of x star okay, multiplied by x minus x star okay 
So the same thing instead of the instead of f dash f x we have the gradient because it has like it is a multi variable one. Okay. Now substitute in this f of x star x star is x star is nothing but one comma one, right? Yeah, one comma one. So x star is nothing but one comma one. So if we substitute substitute here, it's going to be equals to f of x star is going to be one plus one two. Okay. Plus del f of x is del uh, f of x star is nothing but do f by do x. Sorry for the bad handwriting. And do f by do y, which is going to be equal to do f by do x is two x. Two x and then do f by do y is two y. If we substitute at the point one comma one, right, which is going to be equal to Two comma two. Okay. This should be derivative from Fourier. So we have here two comma two. Okay. And then this x minus x star, right? This is going to be what? It's going to be equals to x. X you could just assume it like x comma y. Okay. As x x this, this. I mean this vector, right? You could assume it to be x comma y. So if you just subtract subtract it with one comma one, it's going to be x minus one, y minus one. Okay. So I just write this down here. Okay. Uh, sir, 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 small doubt, sir. Yeah. X will be x square y square or x will be x comma y. X. This this x you are talking about, right? This is a vector. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Capital X. Okay. Capital X is going to be x x x x and y, right? Capital X, it's okay. a vector, right? If you if you are going to do the linear approximation of x comma y, right? So so this x is going to be x and y, no? Okay, okay. Okay. This is a two two dimensional vector, right? So it is this x y minus of one one. It gives you x minus one y minus one. Okay. So now if we just multiply this row vector with this column vector, you get two into x minus one plus Two into y minus one. Okay. Now we get this as two uh, x minus two, two plus two y minus two plus two. It's going to give you two x plus two y minus two. Check this. It's going to be two x plus two y minus two. Option B. Okay. Now coming to the ninth question, we have here what is the gradient of f of x comma y? Equals x square by two one comma three. Okay. Gradient is nothing but this two by two x and two by two y. Right? So if you look at it, it's going to be gradient of x comma y. It's going to be two by two x. It's going to be x. First, let me write down this f of x comma y. It is x square by so do f by do x. It's going to be equal to two x by, and then do f by do y. It's going to be equal to x square. Okay. So if we just substitute that two x y is going to be equal to two into one into three six, and then x square value it should it's, it's going to be equal to one. So it should be six comma one. Okay. Is this clear? This okay. Is the ninth problem clear? All we have done is we have just done dou by dou x and dou by dou y, and substituted the values. I mean, substituted the values of x comma y as one and three. Okay. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Okay. Now coming to this, the directional derivative of f of x comma y comma z, right? Equals to x square plus 3y plus z square. F of and the directional derivative of uh, at the point uh, one comma two comma one along along the unit vector in the direction one minus two one. Okay. okay. So here we need to be first thing. What is going to be the directional derivative? Directional derivative is nothing but the gradient of uh, f multiplied by u, right? Correct. 
gradient of transpose multiplied by you know yes sir okay so now let us find the gradient so the function is x square plus uh, 3y plus z square function is uh, x comma y comma z is x square plus 3y plus z square right x square plus 3y plus z square correct so now we have do f by do x which is going to be equal to 2x do f by do y is going to be equal to 3 and do f by do z which is going to be equal to what uh, 2z okay and substituting the values of this 1 to 1 okay you are going to get it's going to be equal to 2 and this not this 3 this constant and 2z since it is like the point is 1 to 1 okay substitute z value here as 1 you will get this 2 by 2 z also as 2 okay so now the gradient vector is, is uh, 2 3 2 okay they are asking for directional derivative in the direction of 1 minus 2 1 but unit vector okay so the value is, is 1 minus 2 1 okay but the length of this vector is what? 1 square plus 2 square plus 1 square. Root 6, right? The length is root 6, right? So, to get the unit vector, we should just divide the length of this vector, with, I mean, length of this vector. Each each value, right? Each value in the, in the vector, we should be dividing with root 6. So, now we will get the unit vector as 1 by root 6, minus 2 by root 6, and then 1 by root 6. Okay? Now, if you want to get the directional derivative, okay, you should just be multiplying this, you should just be doing this uh, LF transpose with respect to u, okay. Now, if you do that, it's going to be, I'll just do this here, okay. This, it's going to be, this 1 by root 6, I can take it as common outside. So, it's going to be 2 multiplied by 1, 2 plus. 3 multiplied by minus 2, which is going to be minus 6, plus 2 multiplied by 1, plus 2, which is going to be minus 2 by root 6, okay? The directional derivative of f of x comma y comma z, okay? At the point 1, 2, 1, along the vector 1, minus 2, 1, unit vector along the direction 1, minus 2, 1, which is going to be minus 2 by root 6, all right? What is that value? Can someone tell me? What is the value of minus 2 by root 6? Minus 2 by root 6, anyone? Okay, let's move forward. Solve it. Find the direction of steepest ascent for a function x square plus x square plus y cube plus z power 4. Okay. When will the when will the steepest ascent will happen? Steepest ascent will happen, right? For this, let's say, let's say you found the gradient f, okay, uh, and then and then you want to find the vector such such that you will get the you get the steepest ascent at a particular point v, okay. So this this u vector it should be such that okay, it should be it should be alpha times v, but this alpha should be greater than zero, okay. If this alpha is greater than zero, then you will be getting the steepest ascent, all right. So now, all we need to do is, right, all we need to do is, we need to find the gradient. Okay, this is, what is this V? V is, v is going to be the gradient, right? So for you, to, for you to find the gradient, you should be doing the same thing. Do it by do x, do it by do y, do it by do z. A particular vector is x square plus y cube plus z power 4. So, do f by x is going to be 2x, this is going to be 3y square, this is going to be 4z cube. At a point 1 comma 1 comma 1, so this is going to be equal to 2, this is going to be equal to 3, and this is going to be equal to 4, okay? But when you want to find out the steepest ascent, right, we normally be looking for the unit vector, right? So, 
generally generally any vector in what sir what, what, what sir what we will be looking for what we will be looking for generally right see any any vector so what what will be having is ideally anything with this uh, okay. any for for any value of alpha for any value of alpha right this this for any value of alpha greater than 0 will be the steepest ascent okay so since since all these vectors are like parallel to each other, generally they will be asking you to find the unit vector, okay? Unit vector that will give the steepest ascent. It was not mentioned, it was not mentioned clearly, but then if you look at the options, it would be clear. Okay. You should be finding this uh, unit vector, okay? How do you find the unit vector? You divide with respect to the length, right? What is the length of this vector? 2, 3, 4. It's going to be 2 square 4 plus Three square nine plus sixteen, twenty five, twenty nine. Okay, it's it is twenty nine. So you just you just divide that. Now the vector which gives the steepest ascent will be two by root twenty nine, three by root twenty nine, and then four by root twenty nine. So two three four. The option will be A. If they are asking you for steepest descent, right? Descent, then it's going to be minus, minus, minus. Okay. None of the options has it, but then if they are asking for steepest descent, then it's going to be alpha, alpha should be less than zero. Okay. Clear, right? 11th problem. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes sir. yes, sir. The direction derivative of f of x comma y comma z. The direction derivative of f of x comma y comma z uh, at a point one minus one one minus one along the unit vector one minus one one. Okay. So the same thing we should be doing. Okay. Here it's going to be equal to the direction derivative, right? Since it is x plus y plus z. It's going to be equal to 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, irrespective of what the point is. Okay? Is this clear? Yes, sir. So this the function is f of x, comma y, comma z is x plus y plus z, right? Dou by dou x will be equal to dou by dou z. Yeah. It's going to be equal to dou by dou z. It's going to be equal to 1, right? So, if they are asking you for the direction derivative along the unit vector 1 minus 1, 1, and what is the unit vector for in the direction of 1 minus 1, 1? It's going to be 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 3, and then 1 by root 3, right? Correct? Now, if they are asking you for these two, right? I mean, the gradient is going to be equal to 1, 1, 1, okay. This, this dot product with respect to 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3. You are going to get 1 by root 3. Okay. This you will take it as like B. It's going to be equal to 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 3 plus 1 by root 3. So, ultimately it's going to be equal to 1 by root 3. Okay. 12th one, clear? Yes, sir. Now we look at the 13th one. Which of the following is our vector equations of a line passes through 1, comma, passes through 1, 2, 3, and 4, 0, 1. Okay. Now they are asking you for finding a find a vector equation of a line, right? That passes through two points. Okay. This is just like uh, this is just like a finding a find, finding a vector equation of a point. Of a two dimensional, but instead of two dimensional, these points are nothing but three dimensional points. Okay. So, how do you find it? Generally, like uh, for example, let's say, how do you do this for the for, for the normal ones? That is, if it is if it has been two dimensional, you would be doing something like y equals to y one plus mx, right? Clear, right? You'll be doing something like this: y equals to mx plus c, right? Similarly, what you'll be doing here is for this for this one, you'll be doing it as like v will be going to equals to 
you consider this one as like u1 u2 so this is going to be equals to u1 plus alpha into u1 minus u2 okay so this is going to be equals to 1 2 3 I hope that is correct Yeah, it's going to be u plus alpha into u dash minus u. Same thing. U dash minus u. Okay. So it should be u2 minus u1. Now we have here for a particular problem. We have here 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 we can consider as u, u1, and then 4, 0, 1 as like u2. So first we will do this u2 minus u1. U2 minus u1. So it will be u2 minus u1 or u1 minus u2. Either way is like all way, but but as as it was mentioned here, it was like u plus u dash minus u. Yeah, so it should be. Sir, am I am I audible, sir? We're having u one, right? It should be u two minus u one. Okay, it, it should be u two minus u one. Okay, so ultimately, it's going to be equal to one minus alpha into u one. Plus alpha into q2, right? Okay. So u2, u2 will consider as 401, and then u1 will be like 1, 2, 3. Okay. So if you just have this, if you just, uh, I mean, if you, if you just subtract this, u2 minus u1, it's going to be equal to 3 minus 2, and then minus 2. Okay, 3 minus 2 minus 2 and then for us the u1 is going to be 1, 2, 3. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3 plus alpha into 3 minus 2 minus 2. So option 1 is correct. Okay, and then you could write it in another way, right? That is uh, u2 plus alpha into u1 minus u2. Okay, this also you could write. So u1 minus u2 will be opposite of this. Minus 3, 2, 2. Okay. And then here, here we'll be having this as this 401, right? So it's going to be equal to 401 plus alpha into minus 3, 2, 2. So option 1 and 2 are correct. Okay. Option number 3 and option number 4 are incorrect. So 1 and 2 are correct. I just use the same definition. I didn't use anything, anything more. Okay. I, I just use the same definition as zero. Okay. 13 is it clear? So, sir, just one doubt. So, when two points are given, we need to just subtract, subtract uh, u2 minus u1 or u1 minus u2. It doesn't matter, does it, sir? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not able to hear it clearly. Can you repeat? Oh, okay, sir. Uh, I was saying that, sir, when two points are given, uh, no, it does it matter, sir, which one we subtract with the other, like u2 no, minus no, u1 or. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, sir. So, like as long as as long as you are following the convention, right? That is, u1 plus alpha into u2 minus u1. It doesn't matter which one you consider as u1 and which one you consider as u2. It doesn't matter. Okay, so, okay, okay, thanks. Okay, I mean that is the reason we got like two, right? One and two. Okay. And as for the Cauchy's wants uh, inequality. Hello, sir. Hello, yeah. sir. Yeah. So when we write like interchangeably like u1 and u2, doesn't the sign change? I mean, will there be any impact on the sign? No, no. See, the thing is, we are having this alpha, right? We are having this alpha, right? Am I correct? Okay. Yes, sir. Alpha, right? And, and this okay. alpha, alpha, we want it to be scalar, right? That, that alpha scalar, it could be positive, negative. So even though, even though you're, having, you're having that sign now, it doesn't matter. Okay. No, I'm not getting. So, what will be the I mean sign of alpha? You're telling, sir. I'm alpha. Can alpha you just repeat it, like, sir. Be like any scalar. We look at this. Okay. Okay. Alpha. Alpha. It could be like any scalar. So it is totally all right. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. So as per the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, if B is a negative scalar multiple of A, if B is a negative scalar multiple of A, then what does that mean? It's A transpose B should be equals to minus of uh, mod A mod B, right? Okay. If 
B is a negative scalar, then that means that A is like parallel to B, but then at angle of 180 degree. Okay. Sir, can you make it make a graph and can you explain in that way, sir? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Please explain this inequality, sir. Cauchy inequality. So, let's consider this. Uh, let us consider we have a vector like this, okay? This is vector v1, and then I have a vector v2. It's not parallel. Then let's let's consider like we have another vector v2 like this, okay? And then v1 is like parallel to v2, okay? Now now the thing is, for you to get v2, how do you how do you do it? You, you just need to multiply it with the scalar, right? Because these two are like parallel. This is like saying. One one one, and then like two two two. Okay, this this is nothing but uh, a scalar multiple of this vector is nothing but a scalar multiple, right? From one one one, you could get two two two, right? By multiplying with two. Okay, so basically these two are parallel and in the same direction. Okay, but let us consider this one. Have uh, this one other vector v three. Okay. This is parallel to V1 and V2, but then the thing is the direction is like opposite. If, if, you, if you take the angle of these two vectors, it's going to be equal to 180. Okay, so V1 and V3, and now now uh, what is Cauchy? What 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 is Cauchy Schwarz inequality says is okay. So the limits will be from now now when you are doing the when you are doing the dot product of these two, right? This is going to be equal to since since these two are in opposite direction, it's going to be equal to mod of modulus of v3 multiplied by modulus of v1 minus this minus n comes because they are in opposite direction, exact opposite directions, and if they are like parallel, then it's going to be equal to I mean in the case of this v1 v2, it it would have been equal to mod v1 mod v2. Okay, so now coming to this problem. Okay. Since B, B is a negative scalar multiple of A, negative scalar means that B is in opposite direction of A, right? For example, let's say I have this uh, minus two, minus two, minus two. Okay. This minus two, minus two, minus two, it it will be in this direction, right? It will be in the opposite direction of this B one B two. Okay. Now, now this uh, how what do we say about B three? V3, V3 is nothing but the negative scalar multiple of 1, 1, 1, or negative scalar multiple of 2, 2, 2, right? 1 into this 1, 1, 1 into minus 2 will give you this. Into minus 2 will give you this. This 2, this this vector multiplied by 1, it will give you this. Sorry, minus 1. Minus 1, it will give you this. So basically, this minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. This vector, it's a, it's a it's a negative scalar multiple of 1, 1, 1. Or an equal scalar multiple of two two, okay. So since it is an equal scalar multiple, they are at angle of 180 degree. So that is why the dot product of those two is going to be equal to minus modulus of a and minus modulus of multiplied by modulus of a. Okay. Clear? This one? Yes. Sir. Is it is it modulus or norm of a and b? Yeah. Both the same. The you could you could consider it like length length okay no okay. sir I have a, a doubt regarding um, the three interpretations sir uh, professor gave regarding uh, the gradient and one of them was that the gradient is perpendicular to the plane that approximates a function at a particular point. So I just couldn't get my head around that. So how can the gradient be perpendicular to a plane which is uh, which approximates the function? Because uh, we know that the gradient is like a slope, so it should be along the function, right, sir? Not perpendicular to it. Okay, you are saying that uh, the gradient, the gradient. Okay. So, for example. I'll just show you that lecture. I'll I'll just show you that lecture and then explain. So talking about this, right? No, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. This one. Talking about this, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. See, 
this this one right we have here we have a gradient let's say okay and then this is the this is the linear approximation of it okay now we have seen here this this linear approximation is going to be called f of e plus gradient f multiplied by this x minus v right okay now from this we have seen that uh, as we have seen now this is a plane right this is a plane this, this linear approximation is, is a plane right yes sir yeah correct and yeah. we have seen that this linear approximation what what is a, what is a normal value to this linear approximation I mean, what is going to be the perpendicular to this to this linear approximation perpendicular vector to this to the, to this plane it's going to be this this gradient only right Yes, sir. Yeah, sir. I get that it's theoretically proven, but sir, when I try to imagine it, uh, I don't like quite get it because uh, okay. in all so, the parts, it's told that the gradient is like the slope. So a slope is always usually along the function, right? So not all perpendicular to the function. Wait, wait, wait. I yeah. will show you that example for that. Okay. So now you could see here this. Uh, we have your we have your slope. Uh, this. Plane as is x one plus x two x two plus x three equals to one, right? You could see here. This is the plane. Yes, sir. And now, what about this vector? Vector one one one. How it will be? It will come from zero, and then and then it it will be perpendicular to this plane. Just yeah. just visualize it. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. It it will be, it will be the one comma one comma one. It's going to be perpendicular to this plane. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So now 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 can you now can you understand? Okay, so so the this uh, plane is approximating a function. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this plane is approximating a function, and and that one comma one comma one is nothing but the one 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 is nothing but the gradient of it. Okay. Okay, sir. But uh, sir, but then how does this um, tell us about the slope? Because the gradient would be indicating gradient something about the slope, slope, right? Yes, sir. So so this this uh, this, this I mean is nothing but the perpendicular to the to the plane, uh, uh, to the linear approximation. Yes, sir. Per it's perpendicular to the linear approximation. Yeah, yeah. So, but so, uh, uh, but the linear approximation does not. Uh, but how does it uh, indicate the slope of the function? It's just hitting the function, right? If we uh, imagine the function as something like a bell, it's just hitting it at some point. This is this is it's not a slope, right? This is this is a plane, right? Yes, this is a plane, sir. This is a plane, correct? What does a plane yeah. have? The plane has a normal to it. It has yeah. a normal, and and that normal, uh, uh, normal is in fact the perpendicular line, okay. And that perpendicular yes, line is going to be the gradient vector, okay. Okay. Acha. Clear? Okay, sir. Okay. A, a plane, a plane, it doesn't have a slope, right? It it has a normal vector to it. Okay. A normal okay. vector defines defines a plane, okay. No. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Now we take short break. After this, after this, we will do, we'll do the solve with this. Okay, clear. We will take a short break of five minutes, and then we will continue. All right. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thanks.
Kalau ya yang here ni. So let us continue session. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. So now we will solve some problems. Okay. <laughs> Let us look at this first problem. I do not want you guys to post your answer in chat box. Okay. Just uh, just try to solve it. Okay. Sir, both of them are less than zero, sir. Okay. Consider this as the consider second one as greater greater than zero. Okay. Second one as greater than zero. Is f s is a continuous at x equals zero? That's the question. I'll give you guys two minutes to solve this, and then we'll get the solution. This this is straightforward. Yes, sir. Continuous. We are getting yeah, continuous. Continuous. Yeah, yes, sir, continuous. 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 f of x equals to x square plus sine of one by x plus three. If x is not equal to zero, and it is going to be equal to one, if I, if x equals to zero, is f continuous at, at x equals to zero? That's the question. Is f continuous at x equals zero? First thing, uh, okay. <clears throat> what about the value of this x minus limit extends to x minus? What about what about this value? Uh, limit limit extends to zero minus x square one by x plus three. What is what is it going to tend to? Approach to minus infinity. Which going to approach to plus three, right? Y minus three. Limit action is zero minus. Okay, this is going to be oscillating. Sine of one by x is going to be oscillating, but then it's going to oscillate between zero. Uh, it's going to oscillate between minus one to one, right? But then the x square value it will be tends to zero. Okay, so limit action is zero minus or zero plus. It's going to be this x square sine of one by x. It's going to approach to zero, but since we have this plus three. This f of I mean limit action is zero minus or zero plus f of x will be will be approaching to three, okay? But then they have mentioned at x equal zero f of x is one, okay? So it is not continuous at x equal zero, okay? If you want me to show that? I'll show it in the graph. Put see here, right? Can you see this? Go. Oh. Okay. This is the value of x square uh, sine of one by x. 
Okay. And then you could see, you could see as, as x is tending to 0, its value will be approaching to 0. Okay. So, come to here. So, this f of x value, since this will be tending to 0, this value will be approaching to 3. And then at x equals 0, it is mentioned as 1. Okay. So, that is why it's not continuous. All right. This is clear. Uh, sir, coming back to that question, sir, previous question. This one? Uh, yeah, this one, sir. Suppose yeah. x square and 3, these two terms are not there, sir. Then if x square one, and 3. Uh, they are not there, then sign 1 by x extend from yeah, minus sin, down side. Sign 1 by x, sin 1 by x, it will not be, it, it, it will not be approaching, right? Actually, it will not be coming. That will be minus in, that will be minus infinity, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so we cannot be commenting on like, it did it, it not actually converge. So, let me just okay. do this. And see this. It doesn't actually converge, okay. It, it, it actually oscillates. Yeah, so from, from minus side it will be minus infinity, from plus side it will be plus infinity, right? Yeah, and more moreover, moreover, yeah, even even when we have this minus infinity plus infinity, right, that doesn't matter. The all that matters is zero to two pi, zero to two pi it's going to be positive, and then like two uh, sorry. Zero to zero to pi it's going to be positive, and then like pi to two pi it's going to be negative, it's going to be like that, right? But then since you're going for infinity, okay, it's going to be oscillating. As you could see here, okay. It, 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 it has been like completely oscillating here. Okay. So, so it will not be converging, it will not be converging to a, to a single point. All right. Single value will not be converging. If it has been only, it's only sign of 1 by x. Okay. Right. We move forward. Let f of x equals to minus x plus c if x is less than or equals to 1. 6 minus 2x square if x is greater than 1. Find the value of c such that f of x is continuous at x equals to 1. Okay. This is simple. All you need to do is you just need to you just need to equate these two. 6 minus 2x square at, at x equals to I mean, at x greater than 1, right? Limit li, limit x is tending to 1. 1 plus okay, this is going to be equals to 6 minus 2, 4. So now we have here minus 1 plus c equals to 4. So c should be equals to 5. Okay. Sir, yes. solve it on, uh, just write it down, sir. We can understand okay. that way, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes. Please solve this one. So we have here. Let me share my entire screen. What is the value of f of uh, 1? Minus x plus c. C minus 1, sir. Yeah. yeah. f of 1 is going to be equal to c minus 1. And then f of uh, limit extends to limit extends to 1 plus what is the value? It should be equal to 6 minus 2x square, right? 6 minus 2x square. This is this should be equals to as extends to 1 plus. This should be equal to 6 minus 2, 4, right? Since it is continuous, this f of 1 should be equals to 4, which base which is basically c minus 1 should be equals to 4. Implies c is equals to 5. Okay. Clear? Yes, sir. Go forward. Oh, same one. They are saying find the value of c such so that f of x is continuous at x equals 3. Okay. At x equals 3, for it to be continuous, x square minus 9 divided by x minus 3, right? x square minus 9 divided by x minus 3. This is uh, x is greater than 3. Okay. So for this, for, the, for this, if you find the limit, right? Limit as extends to 3 plus, this, is, this should be, uh, will be equals to x plus 3, right? Yeah. Limit extends to 3 plus, okay, x square minus 9 by x minus 3, it will be equals to x plus 3, okay? 
x plus 3 will be at x equals 3, which is going to be 3 plus 3, 6. Okay. Limit extends to 3 plus, sorry, it's not 3 plus. It's 3 minus. Since they have mentioned x is less than 3 here. Okay. So, since this x square minus and x minus 3, it, it, will be, it will be approaching to 6, right? 3 plus 3, 6. So, the cx square plus 10, f of 3 should be equal to limit x tends to 3 minus f of x, right? Since this value is equal to 6, f of 3 should also be equal to 6, which is nothing but cx square plus 10 should be equal to 6, right? cx square plus 9, oh sorry, plus 10 should be equal to 6. x square is nothing but 9, right? Yeah, 3 square 9. c into 9 plus 10 is equal to 6 implies 9c is equal to minus 4. c is equal to minus 4 divided by 9. Okay. c value will be minus 4 by 9. Only then, only then the function will be continuous. All right. So here we have cancelled x minus 3, right? What? Here we have calculated? We have cancelled x minus 3, right? While approaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We have, have cancelled x minus 3. Okay, okay. See, only, only at x equals 3, it will not exist. At any other point, it will exist, right? So that's why we can cancel x minus 3. I will come back here. G of x equals to 1 by x plus 3 whole cube if x is less than or equals to minus 1. 2 minus x minus 1 to 1. 3 by x plus 2 x is greater than 1. Find the value, all the values of x where g is not continuous. Okay. First thing here, x is less than is less than or equals to minus 1, right? At x equals to minus 3, it will not be continuous. That's one thing. Okay. At x equals to minus 3, it won't be continuous. And then 2 minus x, let's consider x equals to minus 1. At x equals to minus 1, it should be equals to 1 by 4. It should be equals to, yeah, 1 by 4. But then limit the, the, the right value, right? The right value as x tends to minus 1, this will be approaching to 3. 2 minus x, it will be approaching to 3. Okay. So these two are not equal at x equals to minus 1. So at x equals to minus 1 also, it's not continuous. And then if you look at x equals to 1, okay, at x equals to 1, at x equals to 1, this value will be equal to 2 minus 1, 1. So and then if you look at here, at x equals to 1, I mean as, as x tends to 1, it will be 3 by 1 plus 2, which is going to be 3 by 3, 1, okay. So but at, at x equals to 1, it is continuous. At x equals to 1, it's continuous. And then as x is greater than 2, this value will be like existing everywhere. Okay, 3 by x plus 2. As, sorry, as x is greater than 1, 3 by x plus 2 exists. So only at x equals to minus 3, because here this, this denominator will become 0. At x equals to minus 3, and then at x equals to and, and then at x equals to minus 1, it will not it will not be continuous. Okay. Here. No? Yes? Is this clear? At x equals to minus 3, the denominator will not exist. That is why at that point, it, uh, at, at x equals to minus 3, it will be... Sir, it will be better if you can repeat this one, sir. Okay. Or you can solve a little bit. Is. f of x equals to 1 by x plus 3 whole square if x is less than minus 1 right so for this particular bond when and at x equals to minus 3 it's going to be equal to 1 by 0 square right so it's not defined okay this is not defined so this is going to be it's not going to be continuous okay not continuous at x equals to minus 3, okay? And then if you look at, at x equals to minus 1, okay? Limit 
x tends to 1 minus f of uh, <laughs> 1 by x plus 3 whole square. So 1 by minus 1 plus 3 whole square, which is going to be equal to 1 by 4, 4 and 2, 5. Are you able to see my friend? Right? Yes, sir. Okay. So this, this is going to be equal to uh, 1 and 2, 5, okay? But what about the exact value at uh, at x equals to minus 1, at x equals to minus 1, the value is uh, 2 minus of minus 1, right? Which is going to be equal to 3. So, f of minus 1 is going to be 2 minus of minus 1, which is going to be equal to 3. Okay. So, at x equals to minus 1, not continuous. Even limiting value also does not take right? The limiting value exists, right? No, the limiting value exists. No, the problem is the limiting value. I mean, the the limiting value here is one to five, but then it's not equals to the actual value of f of minus one. No, this point two five is from left hand side. What about right hand side? Even from the right hand side, it's going to be equals three now. See, when minus one to minus one to one, it's going to be equals two minus x, right? So from the right hand side, it's going to be it's going to approach into three. Okay. So from right hand side, it will be approaching to two, one, sir, because uh, x is greater than one. The value of the function is three by x plus two, right? Three by you're, x plus two is the value about, of the you're function. You are talking about x equals to minus one, right? No, no. Okay, okay. X equal to minus. Okay. I am talking about x equals to minus one. I am not talking about x equals to. If you are having x equals to 1, okay, if you are having x equals to 1, then then let's say we have here, then then the then the value of g of x, uh, which is nothing but g of 1, it's going to be equal to 2 minus 1, 1, okay. And then the limiting value, right, from the left hand side, it's also going to be equal to 1. And if you look at from the right hand side, the limiting value, 3 by 1 plus 2, it's going to be equal to 1, okay. So at x equals to 1, it is continuous. OK? So only at x equals to minus 3 and minus 1, it's not continuous. Now we'll solve for this approximate value of 9.1, square root of 9.1. You could just use the, use the linear approximation for this. Try to solve for this since we do not have much time. Square root of 9.1. This they asked for approximate value, right? So and, and they did not mention the value of x2. Consider value of x as 9. Okay. So consider f of x as square root x. Okay. Square root x. So what is going to be the f of x according to the linear approximation? It's going to be f of x star plus f dash of x star multiplied by x minus x star. Okay. So x star, sorry, x star is going to be equal to nine. Okay. X is equal to nine point one. Now we have here f of x star is going to be equal to square root of nine, which is going to be three. What is f dash of x? f dash of root x is going to be equals to 1 by 2 root x. Okay. So this is going to be equals to 1 by 2 root 3. Sorry, root 9. Okay. Multiplied by 9.1 minus 9, which is going to be equals to 0 0.1. So this is going to be equals 3 plus root 9 is going to be 3. This I could replace it to 3. 0 0.1 divided by 6. Okay. Can someone tell me this answer? Point 0.1 divided by 6. 
it's going to be approximately equals to 0 0.0166 so yeah so the square root of 9.1 it's, it's approximately equals to 3.0166 okay now we'll move on to the next one find the linearization so, of sir sir in that case sir x was 9 right what x was 9 and x star was 9.1 x x was 9.1 next star was 9 okay. we are doing the linear approximation at at x at, at x star equals 9 okay okay so sir, you mean like and what value we consider that will be x star right okay the towards yeah, yeah. The, around which we yeah. around which we have to find the uh, approximation yeah. okay. that's, that's going to be x star okay so the nearest nearest value right actually ideally they should be mentioning in the problem but in this case it was not mentioned okay since it is solid constructor right they are not mentioned but ideally they should be mentioning okay because this linearization now we just be doing doing across a across a particular point right okay so the point should be mentioned and whether it is linear like uh, whether, whether it is like linear approximation or like quadratic approximation even that should be mentioned Here they have mentioned clearly, find the linearization of cube root of x at x equals to 8. We will come for this. Yeah, here f of x equals to cube root of x. So, okay. I think this comes to... What? Now, linearization, right? It's going to be equals to with respect to x star of f of x. It will be equals to f of x star plus f dash of x star, same thing into x minus x star. Okay, f of x star is going to be cube root of 8, cube root of 8 is nothing but 2 plus f dash of x, f dash of x is, uh, is x power 1 by 3, right? 1 by 3 into x 1 by x power 2 by 3 this is what it's going to be so if we just substitute this here i mean if we just substitute 8 okay it's going to be 1 by 3 multiplied by x power 2 by 3 it's going to be 8 power 2 by 3 8 power 2 by 3 is nothing but 2 square it's going to be 1 by 12 okay. f dash of x is 1 by 12 multiplied by x minus x star going to be equals to x minus 8. So the linear approximation of the function around the point 8 is 2 plus could even like 2 plus 0. It's going to be 12 by x twelve by x plus 1.3 bar. Okay. Approximately it will be equal to x by 12. X by 12. So, x by 12 plus 1.3. Compute the linear approximation of f of x equals to 1 plus x whole power n at x equals 0. This is also the same way. Okay. You need to find f dash of x. f dash of x for 1 plus x whole power n, right? 1 plus x whole power n, what is going to be f dash of x? It's going to be equal to n into 1 plus x whole power n minus 1. So at x equals 0, right? At x equals 0, this is going to be equal to m. Okay? f dash of 0 is going to be equal to n. So the linear approximation is going to be equal to f of 0, f of 0 is going to be equal to 1 plus f dash of x n into x minus x star, x star is 0, so it is nothing but nx plus 1. Okay. Move on to the next one. Use the linear approximation obtained in the previous question. This one. To compute the value of 1.01 whole, whole cube. Okay. Now they are asking you to, here they are asking you to find 1.01 whole cube, right? So n is equals 3. Okay. 
n is equals 3 and then x is equals to 1.01 so f of uh, 1.0 not, not f of linear approximation of respect to 0 f of 1.01 it will be equals to 1 plus n is 3 into x 1.01 okay. Okay, sorry, wait. Here it is 1 plus x whole power n, right? So x is going to be equal to 0. Okay. So it's going to be 1 plus 3 into 0 0.01. 3 into 0 0.01. So it's going to be equal to 1.03. Okay. The linear approximation of 1.01 whole cube is 1.03. Find the cubic approximation of cubic approximation that asking of f of x equals to uh, square root of 1 plus x. Okay, this cubic approximation it's better not to discuss because we have gone only, only until like quadratic quadratic approximation. Okay, so we will not be discussing this. All right, so I do not want to burden you with this extra one. So we just move ahead. But then if you want to try to do this right, it is nothing but uh, I just give you the formula, okay? Linear approximation, so not, not linear approximation, cubic, cubic approximation of f of x it will be equals to f of uh, x star, let this be instead of 0 x star, okay? f of x star plus f dash of x star into x minus 0 x minus x star plus double dash of x star divided by 2 into x minus x star whole square plus f triple dash of x star divided by 3 factorial into x minus x star whole cube okay this is going to be the linear approximation, sorry, cubic approximation. Okay. You could just substitute this formula and then get this. Okay. I will come for this. Find the linearization of f of x comma y equals to e power x sin of x minus y. It's not f of x, it's going to be f of x comma y. Okay. This, uh, as you have seen, the, the linear approximation, right, which is going to be equal to f of capital X star plus gradient of X star multiplied by X minus X star, okay. Now, this f of X comma Y, it is equal to e power X into sine of X minus Y. What's going to be the gradient? Gradient do f by do x it will be equals to e power x sine of. Are you following? Are you guys following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. If you are, if you are like if you are finding difficulty at any point, you can stop me and ask. So this, this, this is this will be doing by chain rule differentiation. Okay, this you can consider a. This you can consider b. Okay, now uh, it's, it's, it's going to be e power x differentiation into sin of x minus y plus of e power x into differentiation of the sin of x minus y. Okay, plus e power x into if you differentiate uh, sin of x minus y, right? It's going to be equal to cos of x minus y. Okay, multiplied by one because x minus y, x minus y partial derivative with respect to x, it's going to be equal to one. Okay, this is over to x. Now, if you go for dou f by dou y, okay, it's going to be simple. Dou f by dou y is nothing but you just need to differentiate this value, and this is going to be equal to cos of uh, x minus y multiplied by minus one. Minus one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now they are asking you for at a point zero comma zero, right? Okay. Now, if you substitute this value zero comma zero, okay, it's going to be zero zero 
okay this is going to be sign value sign 0 it's going to be equal to 0 so this entire term will go away now if you come here it's going to be e power 0 into cos of 0 which is going to be equal to 1 dou by dou x is 1 dou by dou is e power 0 1 cos of 0 1 multiplied by minus 1 it's going to be equal to minus 1 okay so the gradient is gradient of f is 1 minus 1 okay if you want to find the linear approximation, then it's going to be what? As I mentioned, f of x star, f of x star is going to be f of 0 plus of gradient 1. Gradient is what? 1 minus 1. You should be writing this as column row vector, okay? 1 minus 1. Multiplied by x minus x star, right? Okay, x, x, x is going to be equal to what? x, y. Okay. x, y minus of x star is going to be 0, 0. So, this is going to be f of 0 is going to be f of 0 is going to be 0 because sin 0 is going to be 0. So, this overall term will go to 0. It's going to be 0 plus 1 minus 1 multiplied by x y okay because this x minus 0 is going to be x y minus 0 is going to be y this is going to be equal to x minus y okay this is the linear approximation of e power x sin of x minus y at 0 comma 0 okay hope it's clear now they are asking you to compute the derivative of f of x comma y equals to x square y in a direction of 1 comma 2 at a point 3 comma 2 in a direction of 1 comma 2 so this 1 comma 2 is a vector at the point 3 comma 2 so this 3 comma 2 is a point where we should be finding, finding the gradient f of x comma y is given as x square y again into finding the dou f by dou x dou by dou x is going to be 2xy at a point 3 comma 2 right point is 3 comma 2 okay and then the vector is 1 2. yeah so this 2xy if you substitute the values of x and y right the point 3 comma 2 it's going to be equal to 2 is a 6 6 to 12 and then dou by dou y, it's going to be equal to x square. x square is going to be 3 square, 9. So the gradient is going to be equal to dou by dou x, dou by dou y, 12, 9. Okay. And then the vector is 1, comma 2, 1, 2. So if you want to compute the derivative, right, it's going to be equal to 12, 9 transpose multiplied by 1, 2. This is going to be equal to 12 into 1 plus 9 into 2, 12 plus 18, it's going to be equal to 30. Okay. The derivative of f of x comma y equals x square y in the direction of 1 comma 2 at a point 3 comma 2. Okay. So this in the direction and at point 3 comma 2, we should be very careful with it. Okay. We should be identifying which is a vector and which is a point. Okay. For a function in the previous question, same one, compute the derivative of f in a direction of 2 comma 1 at the same point 3 comma 2. The same thing they are asking in a direction of 2 comma 1 instead of 1 comma 2. Okay. So now if you are going to do it with respect to 2 comma 1, right, it's going to be 12, 9 transpose multiplied by 2, 1. Okay. So, it's going to be equal to 12 to 24 plus 9. It's going to be equal to 33. This is going to be equal to 33. Yes, sir. Sir? Yeah? Uh, in earlier question, hmm. in the direction of 2, 1. In the direction of 1, 2. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This uh, no need to convert unit vector. 
No, no, no. They did not ask in the direction of unit vector or one comma two. They did not mention that. Only oh, okay, sir. If it is asking, if it is asked in the direction of unit vector one comma two, then, then we need to convert uh, unit vector. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. So for a function, the previous question f of x comma y equals x square y. In which direction is the derivative maximum? In which direction is the derivative maximum? They are asking for the same point three comma two. Okay. They are asking for the same point three comma two. We know, right? We we know we know in which direction the derivative will be maximum. Same direction as the derivative, same direction as this gradient, right? Twelve nine. So we have this twelve uh, nine, no? In the direction of this alpha into twelve nine, right? Where alpha is greater than zero. Okay. In this direction, the derivative will be maximum. Okay. If you want, you can find the unit vector, but it doesn't matter. For a function in the previous question, what is the value of maximum derivative? Okay. So now, if you want to find this maximum derivative, it's going to be in this in this case. Now, you should be converting this to an uh, this to a unit vector. Okay. So, what is the length of this? It's going to be twelve square plus nine square. I don't think you'll get the exact one. Oh, it's two point five. Okay, it's exact one. So it's twelve by fifteen by nine, nineteen by fifteen, nine by fifteen. Okay, and if you do this, if you do this maximal derivative, no, it's going to be equal to what? What is going to be the maximal derivative? We know the formula, right? Maximum derivative is going to be equals to mod a multiplied by mod b, or norm a multiplied by norm b, whichever one. The norm, the norm for the a, right? The norm for a, which is nothing but 12, 9. Okay, the gradient one, it's going to be equals 15. Norm for b, since we have converted this to a unit vector, the norm is going to be equals to 1. So, it is going, the overall value is going to be equals 15. Okay, the value of the maximum derivative is going to be equals 15. Which is nothing but the length of that particular gradient one. Okay, this is this clear? No. Yes. Hello. Is this clear? Yes. Sir. Okay. For a function, the previous question is same one. What is the derivative in the direction of minus three comma four at point three comma two? It's the same one. Okay, we just find out. But I guess now it's going to be zero. Yeah, it's going to be zero. Yeah, because we have here twelve nine, right? Twelve nine transpose multiplied by three minus four. Minus three four. Minus three four, right? It's going to be equals to minus thirty six plus thirty six, which is going to be equal zero. Okay. Now what does this say? Can someone tell me? What does this actually mean? Gradient, not sir. Yeah, the gradient, right? I mean the directional derivative, the directional derivative of a function at a particular point, right? With respect to another direction, it's equal to zero. What does that say? This gradient is like perpendicular to this. Yeah, These two yeah, vectors yeah. are like perpendicular. Okay, that is why it's equal to zero. For a function, the previous question, what's the derivative with respect to the same thing? Minus four minus three. Okay. If it has been like minus four minus three, it won't be equal to zero. Okay. If it has been four comma minus three, then it would have been even then it won't be zero. Okay, so it won't be equal zero, but it will be equal some other value. Okay, I won't be computing this because it is just same substitution value. Now this one can sum under x squared by equals to norm of x multiplied by norm of y. If x equals to two five six. 
and y equals 16 40 to 48 without computing can you tell whether this is equal to this or not i mean whether this x dot y is equal to norm x multiplied by norm y or not can someone tell you can use that cauchy uh, functions okay this one this cauchy towards inequality First of all, tell whether it's true or not. I have told about this. Sir, I have talked about this. Yes, sir. We need to solve x dot y and another norm of x and norm of y, then multiply yeah. it. If without, it is equal, then we can say this is equal. Without computing, we should be telling. Actually, I told you that when will when will this hold true? I told now when these two are like parallel, right? When, yeah. we, when will the x dot y will be equal to mod x mod y? When these two are parallel, right? Am I right? I have mentioned this, remember? Okay. I talked about it here, remember? B1, B2? B1, B2, B1, B2, B1, B3. Yes. If it is equals to mod b1 mod b2 what does that say these two are like parallel to each other right yeah these two are parallel to each other right so now for it to be equal for x dot y to be equals to norm x norm y x and y should be parallel to each other right for x and y to be parallel to each other one vector should be a scalar multiple of other right so if you look at it here x is 2 5 6 Y is 16, 40, 48. If you actually it is, y, yes, sir, multiple of 8. Yeah. Y is equals to 8x. Okay. Y is equals to 8x. That is why x dot y is going to be equals to norm x multiplied by norm y. It is actually true. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sir. Okay, so that's all we have. So yeah. If you have any other questions you can ask, or else we can close the session. I hope you are able to follow all of it because I haven't seen like many questions. Okay, okay then. So thanks, thanks everyone. I'll stop. Thank you, sir. I'll stop the streaming and then I'll be ending the session. Thanks. Thanks.